Hi everyone, welcome back to Life Eat Rumble podcast. I'm your host, Will Venus, and this is a podcast where we are very big on autonomy. So what do I have for you today? Well, we cannot let this podcast go by without mentioning the, of the passing of the iconic Paul O'Grady. And it's very weird for me because I only saw him just over a week ago when he was playing Annie. No, not when he was playing Annie, when he was playing Miss Hannigan in Annie. Yes, yeah, so there's that, and I'm going to talk about going to see Emma Kenny's tour. The Serial Killer Next Door. That was really, really good. But before we get to all that, it's the 31st of March 2023 and today is the day of trans visibility. So whether you're trans, non-binary, gender non-conforming or gender neutral or however you identify, I just want to give a big shout out to you all. And yeah, just be proud of who and what you are. and Be visible, always. I find it very interesting how trans day of visibility is just confined to one day what's wrong with it being all year round yeah that kind of irks me a bit i don't really know what more to say on that uh because i realize that there is i mean that this is quite a contentious topic to talk about but yeah so paul o'grady passing away at age 67 on the 28th of march oh I cannot believe it. I'm still in shock. Uh, He was such a joy to watch, whether it was himself or as Miss Lily Savage. Um, Yeah, I want to talk a little bit about about him. Like I said on a post that I put on Instagram, Lily Savage, it was like the first time I saw her, it was like my first introduction to what drag was because I saw it on the TV. And I remember as a child watching and thinking, she's different. Not really questioning what the difference was, but just noticing that she was different. And so, yeah, that was my first introduction introduction to drag. And then when it became ever more so in the mainstream with the likes of RuPaul's Drag Race UK and the American series and all the other franchises that it has, because it seems to be everywhere these days, doesn't it? Uh, Yeah, me and my mum used to sit and watch her. Thoroughly entertaining lady. And... Years later, when uh, Paul O'Grady decided just to be himself, which is quite a, an amazing thing to be able to do, going from essentially being a character that it is said that Paul hid behind to being himself. That is incredible. It's so incredible. And so whether he was involved with things like, you know, his passion and compassion for animals, you know, watching his documentaries on, you know, the... The series that he had set in Barcy Dogcom. Oh, <laughs> I cannot watch one single episode of that without tearing up or being fully, you know, fully blubbing. I just can't. Uh, and anything that Paul was attached to, we loved. And in our home, never mind her children, my mum's favourite person in the world was Paul O'Grady. Whether it was watching him on the TV. Or uh, sometimes she would listen to her radio show. Um, me and my husband never ever used to miss his radio show that was on on a Sunday that he had on one of the BBC radio channels. I can't remember which one it was. And yeah, I mean, even though I didn't know Paul O'Grady personally, I have grew up with him and had him be like a feature in my life, always. And so when I woke up on Tuesday morning... Was it Tuesday morning or the Wednesday morning? Tuesday or Wednesday, I can't remember. And I actually found out that it... And and I didn't actually see it on the news or anything. What happened was I was reading, you know, that thing that you usually do when you get up in the morning. And one of the first things that you do is check your social media because that's just what we all seem to do these days. And I went onto Instagram and I was looking at Cheddar Gorgeous's page because that was the first one that came up Cheddar Gorgeous uh, they're a drag artist in the from the UK and it was this photo of Lily and she was sat on a pier in Blackpool and she had the like a scarf around her hair and had a ciggy in on, on her stuck to her lips like an iconic Lily look and it just kind of encapsulated the kind of drag that I like but anyway and then I started reading what Cheddar had written and I thought that's a bit strange because it kind of alludes to past tense. I thought, hmm, that's funny. And then I refreshed the page and then someone else's 
page came up and then it said about Paul Grady had passed away and I was like, what? Because just about a week ago, we'd, me and my husband had just went to see him star as Miss Hannigan and Annie in the theatre. So full of life, singing, full of energy, everything. And we were just so shocked because, like, my husband, he adores talking in present tense. No, need to remember that it's now past tense. He adored Paul O'Grady. And I thought, oh, no, how am I going to tell him this? Because he, know, he he was more of a fan than I was. Or is, was. I'm struggling with the tenses here. And uh, this was about half eight in the morning. And the day before, my husband had been working a really long shift. And... Rather than let him lie in, I just had to wake him up and tell him the news. Uh, and I, I, I still can't believe it. I can't believe that he's not here. I've, I mean, I've always struggled with the fact that someone can be here, living, breathing, laughing, loving, and then be gone within the blink of an eye. It's... Yeah, it's very odd. And of course, when someone in the public domain dies, it reminds you of your own grief journey and you know, kind of brought those feelings back for me. And so that coupled with Paul O'Grady being my mum's favourite person in the world, my mum is also no longer with us. It was, it's very, it's, it's very odd. It, if you're not from the UK, Paul O'Grady, he was like a national treasure, a national institution. He kind of led the way for UK, well, not, entirely himself there was other people involved but he kind of led the way for the UK to kind of get used to drag because of, bearing in mind at that point of in his career when he had when Lily Savage came on the TV on the BBC and it, we just came out of the 1980s AIDS pandemic and everything and that's that's such an amazing thing to be able to do to appear in full drag on TV and be accepted by people. I find that so incredible. And the way that he was so fully committed to the character of Lily, which he said that he based on various women that he had in his life. She wasn't based on anyone in particular. She was based on various women that he had in his life. Uh, yeah, so... To any other fans of Paul O'Grady out there who are, you know, feeling sad and things, I get it. I understand. I'm feeling it as well. We're all feeling it. And when you watch on TV, like the people, the like other celebrities that knew him, no one had a bad word to say against him because he was just so down to earth, true to who he was, didn't have any pretensions. He's, he had like what I kind of call kitchen sink comedy. That to me, it's like comedy that can that anyone can relate to, no matter what class you're from. And both Lily and Paul, they were fully working class, were proud of being working class, and I love that because I'm working class and proud of it. And yeah, like like the the, the kind of humour and sorry, I'm still suffering with a cold and chest infection. Sorry. Normal services will be resumed next week. Fingers crossed. Uh, yeah, it was like jokes about like hanging stuff on the out on the line and <laughs> and yeah, just his sense of humour, spot on for me. You know when you when I've watched old interviews and when he's talking about his friendship with Cilla Black and the singer Sonia, uh, it just brings back great feelings of nostalgia for me. It really does, and for all of that to now be gone it's gonna take yeah it's gonna take some getting used to now my husband yesterday he was actually telling me about paul o'grady's name his name wasn't actually paul o'grady well not his surname anyway when paul was born his name was just grady not o'grady uh it seems that when paul was in the raf when they were doing the forms and things for his registration or whatever They'd made a mistake and put the O apostrophe. I don't know what that's called. What what is it when you have the, the like the letters and an apostrophe before a name? What is that called? If someone can write in to tell me, uh, you can let me know on Instagram. It's in the show notes. 
yeah, his name was just simply Paul Grady, not O Grady, but he seemed to like it and stuck with it. Yeah, I find that. I I I personally find those kind of details fascinating because one of my autistic special interests is names and where stage names were derived from. And it said, I think the Savage in Lily Savage was his mother's maiden name. I'm not sure where the Lily bit comes from, so if someone could let me know, that would be fantastic. But what annoys me at the moment, I know, I know that not everyone can help it, but when people are writing about Lily Savage in their posts and online and things, they spell Lily, L-I-L-L-Y, but it was only L-I-L-Y. There was only one L in the middle. That kind of annoys me. It's the small details that count for me, you know? Yeah, and then when I think about how he marched against the Section 28, a thing that Margaret Thatcher's government put into power, uh, yeah, he, and also he never stopped talking about gay and queer rights. Never. And... I was watching an old interview that he did, and back in the day when he was doing his drag act, I think it was the 80s or 90s, and the police had raided this particular club that he was in. I think it might have been in Vauxhall. That might be wrong. Uh, and they all burst in wearing rubber gloves. And <laughs> apparently Paul said to them, Oh, you come to do the washing up? <laughs> It's that kind of fight against authority that I just love because I hate authority. I can't stand it. I don't know what you're like. I mean, I do like law and order, but I've never been one for bowing down to authority, you know? Yeah, and it's said that he died unexpectedly but peacefully in his sleep. And in my opinion, that is just the ideal way to go, isn't it? Just peacefully in your sleep and you're not aware of it. You just slip away. I remember... When we went to see the the play Annie, and I thought that at the end of the play, you know, when they all do their their bow to the audience, holding hands and things, and I remember at the time thinking, because Paul gave the audience this look, and the cast members this look, especially the kids that were in it, and it was kind of look that said, "I've done all I need to do now. Thank you so much for all that you've given me. I can go." I don't know why I thought it. I have no idea, and I realise that some people will say, oh yeah, you would say that in retrospect, won't you? Wouldn't you? Sorry. But that's just the impression that I got. And I also said in my previous podcast episode that I was sure that the wig that he was wearing to play Miss Hannigan was one of Lily's. And so with me being a wig maker and being completely obsessed with wigs, I had to research this. And the last interview that he gave as Lily Savage when she was on Parkinson, I am 95% sure that it's the same wig that he wore as Lily that he wore as Miss Hannigan. And the reason that I say that is the position of the black dot where the roots are meant to be in the wig. Because where the black dot is, there's like a half an inch in front of it, and I think that's where the the lace is. And yeah, I'm, I'm Almost almost certain that that was one of his Lily Savage wigs. And so, yeah, for me to have that Lily Savage connection, to see it on stage, all very special to me. Very, very special. And I was saying to him, I keep saying, and. How, how else can I introduce the next sentence? Anyway, I said to my husband, can you imagine what his funeral's going to be like? It's going to be massive. I mean, that's if he allowed for it. I know that not everyone wants a funeral, but with Paul being so well-known and well-loved, I can imagine that that funeral is going to be huge. Absolutely huge. So, yeah, rest in peace, rest in power, rest in hilarity. Paul O'Grady, you are going to be so missed. So now I want to talk about another show that I went to see. On Sunday, me and my husband went to see Emma Kenny's tour, The Serial Killer Next Door. Now, just to give you a bit of background about how I came to know Emma Kenny. She is, a, I think she's a psycho, psych therapist, psychologist, and she works in the media. She's She sometimes appears on the chat show this morning as their resident psychologist. Uh, I 
love Emma Kenny and I love true crime. And the way that I found Emma Kenny was when, years ago when she used to do the true crime on like the Crime Investigation Network and various other Sky channels, satellite channels. What do you call them these days? I don't know. Yeah, and I always said that if I was watching a crime show and Emma Kenny wasn't commentating on it, it wouldn't be any good. And it never really is. And throughout, like, the the pandemic, so, like, from 2020 to 20, late 2021, Emma Kenny, she ran free mental health cl- clinics on her Facebook, Twitter, uh, YouTube, and Instagram. Like, she managed to live stream them all at the same time. I have no idea how that works. That's my idea of an, a nightmare, having to have all those things running at the same time. Anyway, because I was want I was wanting to improve my mental health, and so I started watching these clinics. And I didn't know that she did these clinics until I somehow happened upon her uh, Facebook page, and I started watching them, started listening. And so, what would happen? People would write in with their mental health concerns, either for themselves or for other people, and the, and they would discuss all things like anxiety, depression, bipolar borderline personality disorder, uh, psychopathy, autism, although autism isn't a mental health condition, it does tend to affect one's mental health. And I found it fascinating getting to learn about all these mental health conditions that people had. Because I myself, I really struggle with anxiety on a daily basis, but thanks to Emma's words and advice, I've been able to not fix it, but live with it because in my opinion you can't really fix anxiety it's just something that you have to yeah just live with and navigate through life but she was always very she, when you think about a psychologist I mean foolishly I think of the, you know like the stereotypical psychologist where you go in they're a very stuffy unapproachable person and you sit on a couch and you say well it all started in my childhood and it's like back and forth questions and they just give you the info and tell you to go. Whereas Emma, she really gets to know the person and absolutely loves, I mean, loves what she does. And so that changed my opinion of what a psychologist is. I mean, I know, I know that there's diff- many different types of psychologists that you get. I mean, you get therapeutic psychologists, you get forensic psychologist, you get clinical psychologists, there's 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 many different iterations of what a psychologist is. But Emma predominantly works in therapy. That's when she's not doing her fat- fantastic serial killer stuff. And with Emma being a psychologist, she knows a significant amount of information about the mind. And so she can use that to discuss people like serial killers. And serial killers, for whatever reason, fascinate me. I don't know if it's because I'm the opposite of a psycho- psychopath. I'm an empath. Uh, so me trying to work out how a psychopath's mind operates, I find fascinating. When I found out that Emma was doing this nationwide tour, I thought, I have to go to see that. I have to go and see that. And so I think it was last October that the date was released for this tour and I bought the tickets and we went to see the show that was on last Sunday. And with being part of Emma's community, uh, I've made friends with a lot of other people that watched her clinics and we follow each other on Instagram and and Twitter and things. So shout out to all the Kenny's Crime Cult members out there. Hi. (laughs) When I saw the pictures of other two dates, people got to meet her afterwards and I thought "Mm, is she going to do that here? I don't know because I'm the kind of person I don't like to plan for excitement I plan for disappointment because I don't like to be disappointed and so we went to the Usher Hall which is here in Edinburgh which is where I'm based I'd never been to that particular theatre before but it's absolutely stunning It's, it's lovely I'm not sure how old it is um I think it maybe is Victorian, possibly older. I'm not entirely sure. If someone wants to write in, do let me know. And we 
by the time I got there, I was absolutely soaked because I wore this jacket for the rain, but it was a really heavy jacket and the weather wasn't that cold. And so I was soaking my sweat, which I know, I know is a bit too much information. But So I was feeling a bit uncomfortable by the time I got there. And as we sat down, I thought, <laughs> what's that smell? I'm like, why that? Why do I smell like glue? Because I was smelling like glue. I mean, I don't use glue about my person. I don't sniff glue. I don't do anything with glue. So that was in my mind. But I'll tell you why I was smelling like glue later on. It's nothing bad or anything. But there's there <laughs> there's a bit of a funny reason for it. And so we sat and watched the show, and we listened intently to Emma. Well, I listened intently, <laughs> but because my husband had worked like a an eight or nine hour shift, he was sat next to me and at times because serial killers isn't really his thing <laughs> like we were in row B, okay, so like one row from the front and I'm having to nudge him because he was falling asleep and I'm thinking, is Emma gonna see that this guy's falling asleep? Is she gonna think that we're bored? I wasn't bored because she was talking about serial killers, but my husband was falling asleep. And he just, he had to come because he's also been helped a lot by Emma because she helped him get over his, over many different fears that he had that were holding him back in life. And now that he's just thriving, like really, really thriving. And so she talked about serial killers like Ted Bundy and... Who else? Oh, who else did she talk about? Uh, yeah, there was many different serial killers that she talked about, and she broke down, like, kind of why they do these things. A lot of them had trauma in their childhood, but it's important to note that not every person that has trauma in their childhood goes on to be a serial killer. Okay, <laughs> all we're saying is it can be a regular theme for a serial killer. Yeah, and then she talked about Dennis Rader, which uh, is BTK. Oh, a horrific, horrific man. I don't know if he's still alive or if he's been executed. Or no, he wasn't executed, I don't think, because he gave all the information the police wanted to know. Yeah, I think that, that was his bargaining thing. And they talked... I've, I've pretty much watched all documentaries that I can find about serial killers, okay? There was one that she talked about that I hadn't seen, and I'm glad I hadn't seen it because... I didn't want to know all the details. Oh, God. It was this guy, and he was nicknamed by the press the Toy Box Killer. I can't remember what his name was. I don't really want to know what his name was. But if, you, if you're if you someone that's of a nervous disp disposition, I would <laughs> highly suggest turning off for the next minute or so, or you can skip the next minute or so, or whatever it is that you do. What he did was he had like a an old shipping container and he had it converted into this quote unquote toy box. And what he did, he had like a he'd installed like a, a dent what could, what I can describe as like a dentist's chair, okay? And on the dentist's chair there was like shackles and all around him was implements of torture all around him to torture women. And she showed us photos of this quote unquote toy box. Oh my goodness, uh, it's safe to say I didn't sleep well that night because you can imagine what kind of things were in this box. And what he did, he would kidnap women helped by his family. How disgusting is that? He would render them unconscious somehow and then they would wake up in this container shackled to this chair a pre-recorded voice would come on now i'm not going to tell you the words that he used but they were absolutely vile okay but what he did was he outlined what he would do to these women and so you can imagine the kind of fear that was instilled in these people that is the most frightening thing I can think of. Being absolutely helpless and you can do nothing about it. And you just have to accept the inevitable. Yeah, so there was that. And 
although she was talking about a serious topic, she kept it really funny as well, <clears throat> which is just Emma all over. She's got a great sense of humour. And she said, "What are, what's the one thing that these killers all have in common? Yeah, that's right. Bad haircuts. <laughs> <laughs> and they all did have very bad haircuts. So yeah, the I think we were listening to that for about an hour and a half and the show came to an end. And I thought, that was great, because it was great to see Emma in person. That was definitely one that I had on my bucket list. And then she said at the very end, if you want to come come and have a chat, come and say hi. And I thought, oh my God, <laughs> I've got to see Emma Kenny. I've got to say hello to her. I've got to chat to her in person. This person that I've listened to for years, I'm going to meet her. And so there was like 60 people waiting to see her in this queue. And... We were getting closer and closer to where she was. And I'm like, oh my God, there she is. There she is. Oh my God, there's Emma Kenny, the crime queen. Because she's really helped me with my life and really overcome things that were really holding me back in life. Because right now I'm flying, yeah? To, I mean, to anyone out there listening, if you've got fears or anything that's holding you back, just find a way of getting over them and thrive, please. Don't look back on your life and think, oh, I wish I did that. Just whatever your fear is, get over it, please. But anyway getting back to the story and so we were getting closer and closer to you know meeting her and I'm like oh my god what the hell do I say what do I do where do I put my face what what do I do and then as I stepped towards her she was like oh I, I know that face I know you you're well Venus <laughs> I was like, oh my god she knows who I am because we yeah we we have talked to each other quite a lot uh, on social media and things I'm like oh my god she know Emma Kenny knows who I am <laughs> So that, it was a it was a very surreal thing, very, very surreal. Uh, it was wonderful to meet her. We talked briefly about, well, I, had, I thanked her for all that she did for me. My husband, he, oh, it was so sweet because he was, he just, he had all of these things to say to her and he just said them so quickly so that he remembered and it was so cute. And she was like, do you want to, do you want to have a photo? And I'm like, yeah, great. <laughs> Why not? And I said to her that, you know, I was doing my podcast and things. She said, oh, my God, really? Send me, send me your YouTube. I'm like, it's just my name. And so I'm not done that yet. But, yeah, that was, oh, that was such a highlight of my life, meeting Emma Kenny. She is, what you see online and TV is exactly what you get in person. And also she, also she is gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Uh, and her... Her husband, Pete, was there. Uh, if there's any possibility that you listen to this, Emma and Pete, hi. I saw Pete, he was uh, dealing with the, the merch side of things. And yeah, I had a photo with Emma. My husband had a photo with Emma. And yeah, that was absolutely wonderful. Yeah. I'm so glad I went. I was so nervous at going. And then afterwards, me and my husband went to this place called Freets. And it's the place on Lothian Road, which is just a minute walk from the theatre and they sell the best chips in Edinburgh, okay? If ever you come to Edinburgh, you sh you have to try... And you like chips or fries, as they're known in other places. French fries or whatever you call them. You have to fry... You know, you know, you don't have to fry them. You have to try Frites Edinburgh. They are the best chips ever. They're crispy. They taste of something. They're delicious. And so... Coming back to why I was smelling of glue, I couldn't be bothered doing my hair. So I just put it back in a ponytail and hairsprayed it. But what I forgot was I'd used this hairspray called Got To Be Glued. Yeah. So because I was sweating and because that particular hairspray is water soluble, the smell of glue was emanating. So that's why I was smelling of glue, not for some, yeah, it wasn't, I wasn't smelling of glue because of some sort of nefarious purpose. <laughs> yeah, so that has been my week. Uh, what have I got planned for the next week? Well, I've not been on YouTube, cre created any content for YouTube for ages, so I will be doing that. I've missed it so much. I've not been on there, one, because I've been so busy and blessed with wig work and two 
I've been so unwell. I just the thought of turning on a camera and doing makeup or talking about something, I just couldn't. That's I mean that's one of the reasons I really really love doing this podcast. I don't have to get dressed up. I don't have to make huge production plans. I mean I've not got like a huge production value or anything. It's just a camera, a mic, and <laughs> makeup. But for that, I need to focus on various different things. But with the podcast, it's just me talking to you into the mic. And I re- I'm really, really enjoying it. And I have to say, thank you so, so, so much for all the listeners that I'm having. That I'm having? That I've had? Yeah, choose whatever word's applicable there. The podcast is growing. And I am so, so happy. I am so happy that you're all here enjoying this so if you are enjoying this podcast please leave me a review on apple podcasts wherever you listen to your podcasts give me a follow please it would really help me you know just to grow the podcast and when i grow the podcast i'll be able to get guests on i'll be able to get up my production value because right now i'm just like a nobody with an audience a small audience in a stadium that's the kind of thing i have in mind I mean, I appreciate my audience. Of course I do. But I'd like there to be more of you. I want more of you to enjoy this. I want more of you to get involved. I want more of you to let me know what you think on Instagram. So do let me know. Yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed this episode five. That's commitment for me. Yeah, that is quite an achievement. Episode five of series one of Life at Your Own Well podcast. I shall see you the same time, same place same place, same time, same place next week. Sorry, I am recovering. I'm sure you'll forgive me. Do keep listening. Do keep sharing this podcast. It really helps to push it out there and I will see you. Well, not see you. You'll hear me next week. Yeah, that's the one. This has been so fractured. (laughs) Again, that's just me all over. I hope you've enjoyed listening. Do take care of yourself. Make sure you're doing lots of self-care. Be kind to yourself and be kind to others. There is no nonsensical advice this week because I want to dedicate this episode of the podcast to Mr. Paul O'Grady, also known as Miss Lily Savage. You will be sorely missed. God bless.